Hello and welcome to another episode of Focus on Tomorrow. I'm your host, Bakker. Focus on Tomorrow is a nonprofit located in 107 West Wenborough Street, Suite 202, Chicago, Illinois 60605. Uh, www, you could also contact us at website www.focusontomorrow.org. You could email us at www.focusontomorrow.org. Today my guest is Will Brusso. Hi, Will. Hey, how you doing, Bucker? Good. Uh, we will first like first uh, start by asking you. Can you tell me what is Focus on Tomorrow? Sure. Uh, Focus on Tomorrow is an education nonprofit, as you just said a couple minutes ago, that uh, works with high school students who are mainly interested in video production, um, and we have a variety of programs. Um, uh, that serve um, high school students at a very basic level uh, where we just teach them the ins and outs of our editing platform, how to use cameras, things like that. And then uh, we go to a very advanced level like the one that you're seeing right now, this program uh, where we take some students and give them the opportunity to host their own television show. So congratulations to you for reaching this level. Yeah. <laughs> um. And what is the mission behind Focus on Tomorrow? Sure. So the mission behind Focus on Tomorrow is that we strive to create and improve uh, creative programs at the high school level. Um, we work to challenge students to uh, find their creative potential uh, that, to a, and take it to a level that will benefit them for many years to come. So that's kind of our mission, and we're now in our fourth year, and we're pretty good at it. So, uh, How many years have you been in the TV industry? In the TV industry, I have been, I, this shows my age, but I, I'm coming up on 20 years now um, in different capacities. Um, I have worked on the production side, you know, holding cameras and uh, floor directing and things like that. Uh, but on, uh, more recently, I've been on the uh, business side. I've, I've worked in finance um, at local stations here in, um, in Chicago and, and a couple throughout the country. Can you name some? Uh, yeah, I, I, I believe so. Uh, ABC7 was the most recent station that I worked at. I was there for 11 years in uh, the accounting department. Um, a great place to work, had a lot of great uh, co-workers, um, and uh, decided to leave to, to pursue this venture, Focus on Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your motivation for creating Focus on Tomorrow? Uh, so, th yeah, there's a story behind that. That's not an easy answer. Um, so, <laughs> Focus on Tomorrow, let, let me start here. So, when I, when I was in high school, I was a part of a, a video production program okay. at my high school. And it was a very cool program. We got to produce a five-minute live television show every single day. And the, the content was very basic. We read the announcements. Uh, we talked about issues that were happening in the school in five minutes. You know, and, and it, was, it was such a basic show, but it felt like a big deal to us. Anyway, um, that was in Miami, Florida, uh, which is where I'm from, and down there, uh, their school system is facing as, as many uh, challenges as our school system is facing here in Chicago, and that program was cut um, because of poor financing in, in, in the state. So um, I posted a, a picture of the broken up control room for that program on Facebook, and a lot of the alumni for that, from that program saw it and they reached out to me and they expressed concern because that program had put them on a path to uh, develop success successful careers in television and the film industry. So the, um, the, the, the alumni got together, we rebuilt the program uh, for the school and we're happy to say that four, five years later, um, it, is not, it is still in existence. So yeah, we're, mm -hmm. we're pretty happy that we rebuilt that and that's why we built Focus on Tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Um who are the founders of Focus on Tomorrow and what caused them to create this organization? Right, so the, the alumni uh, are, the, uh, are the founders. Um, there, there are many of them that were a part of the original group that rebuilt that, that, that program at Braddock Senior High School in Miami. Um, but the, the founders that have stuck around that are now part of the board are some, uh, so, some high school colleagues of mine. Um, Juan Reyes, who is a, a photographer out in Los Angeles, 
uh, George Vitari, who works for a content distribution company here um, in the States, um, but imports content from all over the world. Um, and Juan Gonzalez, who works for, uh, I believe, Chiron, um, who is also is a, is a media vendor uh, company as well. So those are, those are the co-founders. They, they all came from that same high school. And now we kind of work towards building education programs um, that directly impact students. Okay. Um, your first program was started in Miami, right? Right. And what caused you to make a uh, program over there? Uh, well, it was over there or over here? Over there. Over there. So, yeah, we needed to rebuild that program because it was in, in Miami because it was very, very important uh, to us anyway because we came from that high school. Um, but then once we rebuilt it, we were left with this nonprofit that was organized. Uh, it, it, we, we, were already, we already had this ball rolling. Um, and I decided I wanted to volunteer some of my time here in Chicago since this is where I live now. And I reached out to a couple of different high schools and met some students that were interested in video production. To my surprise, a lot of high schools have production uh, programs like the one that I was used to at my school. Um, and you know, I met some students that were that wanted to hang out on Saturdays and take their skills to the next level, and that's how we started here in Chicago. And that was uh, that was about four years ago, well, like three and a half. And um, yeah, some of those students have now graduated high school and actually still work for Focus on Tomorrow. Okay, uh, what's it called? Your second program is in here in Chicago, right? Yes. And uh, yeah. what may what what have you learned in Miami that made Chicago easier? Place. Um, you know, I don't know that uh, I learned anything that made our programs run any easier because they're so different. Um, the program that we built in Miami was at a high school. Um, we do still have a workshop in Miami that runs for about eight weeks, but it's uh, only eight weeks a year. It's a little different than what we do here. Here in Chicago, um, we have an after school matters program. Uh, where we work with 15 kids during the fall and the spring uh, for 10 weeks, teach them how to edit, how to shoot video, how to tell stories. Uh, we have this program here on Can TV. We have a program uh, at the elementary level uh, in the South Loop. Uh, we have a work program where some of our more advanced students uh, get to work on, um, on real gigs, and they get to work alongside professionals and, like, they work on a set and get paid, so it's 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 pretty cool. Um, the the different avenues that we've been able to build here in Chicago for students who are really interested in this. Um, as far as what I've learned, um, I from one from one city to the next, you know, kids. I I've learned that kids are pretty much the same no matter what city you're in. They really just want a shot. They want someone to teach them something that they will benefit from and take with them for the rest of their lives. And I love that. I love that about, about young people that they, they are willing to learn. They're like little sponges, just craving information. Um, and I, I've been able to take that and just sort of build upon that and, and get more kids into different programs. And when I see kids developing uh, skills that I think they can take to a different level, I can move them into something that's a little bit more advanced and challenging um, just so that they are, number one, not bored, and, and two, uh, developing at a level that will uh, benefit them for many years. Okay, uh, you used to work at ABC7 News, right? I did. Uh, what's it called? How did working at ABC7 News contribute to what are you doing right now at Focus on Tomorrow? Um, so, well, at ABC I worked in the finance department, um, which might not seem relevant, but it really is. Um, when I build out my budgets for Focus on Tomorrow, it, they pretty much look just like ABC's budgets. They have the same format because that's what I was used to working mm -hmm. with for 11 years. Um, and those people taught me uh, so much uh, finance knowledge uh, that... I, I definitely could not be running Focus on Tomorrow if it wasn't for what I learned there at ABC. Um, those people were, were, were gracious and, and they, I, they 
basically taught me the way that I have taught so many other students. So, um, so yeah, so that's kind of what I've learned. That that and and that might not seem like a lot, but it really is a big deal to to know how to run a business. Um, and when someone is teaching you that, you know, over over a long period of time, you really walk away with valuable knowledge. Okay. Uh, what does Focus on Tomorrow teach the youth about video production? Um, well, we teach them that uh, you know, telling a story visually is is a valuable skill. Um, anyone that knows anything about television knows that viewing habits are changing, right? I mean, we're not all sitting in front of the television anymore uh, to get our, our 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 content, our video content. Uh, we watch shows all over the place, right? We watch shows on our phones, we watch shows on our tablets, we watch shows on our computers. Um, this show, I think, is being streamed on Can TV's website. So, um, you know, there's that 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 viewing habit is changing, and I think that when you become an adult and you're ready to work in media, the job the job the landscape for for that industry will be different. And um, I think that uh, teaching just te just teaching kids how to tell a story is still going to be a valuable skill because even though the platforms are changing, media content will always be important. It will always be on demand uh, or in demand, I should say. Um, so that's really what we what we focus on the most. You know, for example, we teach uh, our students how to edit on Final Cut Pro Seven, which is kind of an outdated software, but it's still similar to some other products like Adobe Premiere. Um, so, you know, we, we focus more on the storytelling aspect than on like the technology itself, um, because technology is ever changing. And what I learned to edit on 20 years ago uh, is nowhere near in existence anymore. So, you know, That's true. yeah, as long as you can tell a story, You'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what have you learned from the positive setbacks and the the positive outcomes and the negative setbacks of working at Focus on Tomorrow? Um. You know the positive. I think I kind of went over a little bit ago. Um, I, I love working with kids because they 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 love to learn. They love they they crave information, and when I see a student who might not have even been interested in editing and then suddenly starts taking to it and they're like oh yeah I see how this works and now now I'm kind of into it that is re really rewarding um, there's no price you can pay on uh, you, you can put on that um, the negative setbacks are you know some some students um, you you, you kind of lose control and, and, and side of and um, you know, living here in Chicago, sometimes we get bad news about students, and uh, uh, sometimes it's way too often. Um, one of the one of the high schools I work at here in Chicago has lost four students this school year. Um, oh, I'm sorry, three students, one alumni, um, and I think that's the the count might be even higher. That it's only October, and I think that that that's a negative setback to these kind of programs. You start to uh, develop a relationship with some of these students, and when you lose them that way, it, it, it's heartbreaking. Right, right. Uh, Focus on Tomorrow has been creating uh, Chicago high schoolers a uh, benefit. What are the benefits of them learning in a safe environment? Um, well, yeah, exactly, right? I mean, we're, we're, we're taking kids, um, since, most of our, since most of our programs are after-school programs, we're taking kids and putting them in a safe environment so they can learn something that's productive. I, I don't necessarily assume that every single student that sits in my classroom is going to fall in love with video production or want to do it professionally. That, that, that's true. But for that two and a half to three hour period that I have them, they are in a safe environment. They're not, they're not in jeopardy. Um, and I, I feel good about that. I feel good that I can take 15 kids, you know, for a few weeks and, and put them in a place that enriches their lives and keeps them safe. Um, and, and, and that's really rewarding. So yeah, I, I hope to keep doing that for many years, man. Yeah. Uh, what type of programs are in Focus on Tomorrow? 
Um, so there are, there are um, real basic education programs where um, students can learn the basics of the technology behind creating videos. Uh, one of them is at Innovations High School where we go in and, and well, I go in and teach a couple hours every single day. Um, and then we have after school programs, um, one at an elementary school, one that's partnered with After School Matters, uh, job placement programs, um, the Scan TV program. So we have a, a couple different programs and then we have what you were describing earlier in Miami, we have that eight week program um, down there as well. And that's just a way for me to give back to the city that I'm from. Um, but we hire someone down there to do that. It's not really me. So I, I don't necessarily get a direct benefit from that uh, program, except that I'm helping my, my city that I grew up in. Um, there's obviously more programs here in Chicago because this is where I live and I'm directly impacted by, by, by our neighborhood. So yeah, I, I love building here. Okay. Uh, have you seen the youth benefit um, from this program? Yes, absolutely. Um, thank you for that question. If I could share another story, um, like I said earlier, you know, a lot of our a lot of our students are not going to go into production work, and they're not going to be cameramen. Uh, some really want to be, and some really don't. Um, one of my one of my first students that I ever worked with here in Chicago, um, his, his uh, I'll, I'll just say his first name. His name was Ramiro. Um, he he's. He was an interesting student because he was really shy and reserved, and he was among these other students who were really outgoing and ambitious. And he he didn't really like want to do too much in front of the camera. Um, and one day uh, he was telling me that he liked to cook, and I and I was, you know, on him. I said, "Well, you got to find your passion, man." Um, so we we got him an internship at ABC uh, with one of the cooking shows that, that they were producing there. And the chef of that cooking show is also the dean at a culinary school here in Chicago. Well, Romero and him uh, hit it off and Romero expressed an interest in going to that culinary school. And he did. Not only did he finish his degree, but he also is now a chef at a uh, restaurant here in Chicago. So there's an example of someone who didn't necessarily benefit from all of the production education that we uh, put forth in our curriculum, but someone who at least we were able to steer in the right direction. Someone who came up to me and expressed an interest in something, and I was able to push him in that right direction. And um, to this day, I keep in touch with him. Yeah, I, I went to his restaurant a couple weeks ago. I, I love the guy. I love what he's doing with his life. And it's that... It's that type of like outcome that is totally rewarding and makes all of this worth it. So I, I hope the next time I'm on here, I get to have more stories like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I understand how, you know, Chicago is a larger place than Miami. And um, what's it, how do you balance both of them at the same time? Um, yeah, when, when it comes time to put together the Miami eight-week program, um, it it gets a little crazy. In fact, I'm coming up on that season now, so I have to start wrapping my head around that. Um, and then at the same time, I'm I'm looking at, at other cities as well. So um, it, it gets pretty stressful. It gets really stressful because I, I have to have um, my hands in many in many different pots. But I'm lucky because uh, some of the uh, a couple of the uh, students that I originally worked with here in Chicago are now in college and they've stuck around. And they, they help me out. They, they come in and they work for Focus on Tomorrow and they start to sort of take ownership of some of these programs so that I don't necessarily have to be everywhere myself. And that sort of, that sort of helps me balance uh, some of these new programs that I want to create um, or, or bring back, like the Miami program. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, what's it called? Do you have any desires to expand Focus on Tomorrow? Yeah. So, yeah, I was just kind of uh, brushing over that. Um, yeah, I, I do. I, I want to expand into uh, Los Angeles. Um, one of my um, board members who I talked about earlier, uh, Juan Reyes, he's a photographer out in Los Angeles. And uh, he, we want to build a workshop out there for some of our at-risk students out there. Um, and we just want to try to get our, our product in, in, into as many markets as possible and help as many kids that we can 
Um, so that's next on the list. I don't know how I'm going to pull that off and Miami and Chicago at the same time, but mm. um, I, I love the challenge and I love uh, reaching as many kids as possible. So I'll, yeah. I'm going to do my best. So. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, what's it called? What are the creations uh, between the after school programs? I'm sorry, what was the question? What, were, what are the creations uh, for the after school programs? Uh, so the, most of the programs end with some sort of final video that tells a story on some sort of topic and these topics can range in from like uh, spoken word poems to public service announcements uh, sometimes we go out and we interview people in the community um, different nonprofits uh, different business owners and we make like little commercials for their businesses so you know every product is different I, what I try to do is I try to at the, at the beginning of each session, gauge the interests of the students and have them work on a, on a, on a video that they're going to be interested in. Because if I just assign them uh, to, to work on a certain topic, that video is probably not going to be very good. You, you have to feel your topic and be passionate about it because then, then you'll, you'll see that in your results. Um, so that's kind of what our videos, our final videos are about. And yeah. Uh, what are some cool parts about after school programs? Um, man, there's so many cool parts. Um, I, I, I sometimes feel like my job is one of the coolest jobs in the world because we're, we're playing with cameras, we're making uh, funny videos, sometimes dramatic videos, and everything is different. Nothing is ever the same. And I like that. I like that nothing is ever the same um, because when I worked in finance, you can imagine a spreadsheet full of numbers is a spreadsheet full of numbers. And every month you do the same thing. But now my job is different every single day. And even though I'm going to the same places, like the kids bring different ideas. And I, I love that. I love that about my job. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. We'll see how long we can keep it going. Uh, what are the relationship between Innovation High School and, and what's it called? And the program, after school program. Is there uh, any connection? Yeah, well, yeah, um, there is. What I when uh, Focus on Tomorrow goes into innovations, we um, are are recruiting students as well into our after school program. So that's a connection. Um, and uh, you know, we, we we teach a similar curriculum. Um, it's a little bit more basic at innovations, just because some students are taking that class uh, just to satisfy credits for uh, for graduation and they're not necessarily interested in, or, or I should say, they're not as passionate about video production. Uh, the students who come into my after school program select that program uh, as an enrichment program, so they're a little bit more passionate about it and they come in with a different attitude. Um, but yeah, sometimes I find kids at Innovations and pull them into my after school and uh, we're together even more time every single day and it, it, projects get even better. Yeah. What is it called? Have you have the number of students increased on your on your program? Well, yeah, they have. As we continue to add programs, um, we continue to uh, add more kids to our our little circle of friends, I guess. Um, and and our summer program with After School Matters has doubled in size. Uh, so we're reaching about two hundred kids every single year now, um, which I'd like that number to be higher, um, but. It's, it's a good number for our small team right now, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll try to keep it growing. Can you also tell us how the technology has been changed on this program? Yeah, um, technology, has, technology has changed because uh, we've, been able, we've been able to uh, get more funds to buy uh, newer cameras, DSLR cameras, things like that. Things that I think that the kids are more into, uh, like just uh, yesterday or last week, we, um, we bought some boom mics uh, for them. So this week they'll be learning how to um, operate those boom mics. So yeah, the technology is always changing. And as it continues to change, we have to change because otherwise we're doing it as a service to our kids. Okay, we have a minute left. And can you tell us some future goals about this program? You know, my goal is just to continue to keep serving this great city of Chicago and uh, the, the, the wonderful youth that, that, that fills it. So uh, my goal is just to continue to grow this, these programs and um, learn from other nonprofits who are doing other great work around the city. Um, so, yeah, I, I just try to keep an open mind and, and keep it moving forward. Okay, uh, this is a reminder that 
Focus on Tomorrow is a nonprofit located in located in 107 West Wenborough Street, Suite 202, Chicago, Illinois 60605, not 60600. You, our website is www.focusontomorrow.org. You could also email us at focusontomorrow.org. Right. Uh, I would like to thank Will Brusso for having. Hey, no, please. Thank you for having me. Yeah.